All right, we're here with Freddie Gillespie of the Orlando Magic, currently on his second 10-day contract, originally from the Memphis also. So congratulations on that and definitely hope to see you sticking around. Uh, but I, I've been watching a couple of your interviews and I saw that, you know, let's start at the beginning. You picked up a basketball relatively late. I noticed that's one of the things you said. And that got me wondering, like, how and when did this go from a sport that you weren't even really playing to something, you know, you ended up becoming professional at? What was that process like? Um, yeah, no, I think, uh, I mean, it was, you know, overnight for sure um I think for me you know it was just like it was just you know day by day I just you know just you know the competitiveness in me um you know I just kept falling in love with the game kept wanting to get better I um, mean at some point you know I just had like a, I think I want to play the highest level and I kind of had just like this reckoning where I realized that I could play at the highest level and then when I realized that oh you know that's that that's you know with the hard work you know of course education all that it's reachable for me that's when I you know I knew I wanted to make a living doing it and, and now you are you're now on you know, your second time playing in the league and walk us through when you found out you got the call up this time to Orlando, what was that day like for you? Cause we've heard some pretty cool stories around the league of how guys found out or who told them. So what was your story? Um, yeah, definitely different than my, my first call up or this current call up. This current one. This current one. This one was different. Um, let's see. I was in Vegas. We were going to go to the showcase. Um, and, um, yeah, touchdown in Vegas. Um, you know, we were getting ready. We were having practice. We were, we were having our first practice. Um, so I'm sitting there, and then, uh, of course, we're going through. And then, of course, you know, we see all the things about the league and the, case, and the COVID cases, possible postponements, all that. And, you know, but I'm like, you know, for me, you know, the showcase is a really big deal. So I'm locking 100% into performing and winning that. So then I'm walking back to my room, um, and then I get a call from my agent. He said, hey, um, you know, Orlando wants to call you up. Um, they need you for the game pretty quickly. I said, well, how quickly? He's like, probably like either leaving either tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, um, and I was like, okay. So I had, I think I had, let's see, the showcase was what, two days? I think I had like three pair of pants and two hoodies or something like that. Um, and then, you know, I just was, and then from there, it was just a whirlwind of just trying to get to the flight or like they're trying to get on the airplane, get everything clear so I could you know, get my COVID test and then go be with the team wherever they were going to be next. Um, it was the whirlwind. So, and it's just then that things move really, really quickly. That's awesome. Uh, so, what is that process like for you and players like you when you're just playing in the regular games? Is it a thing where after you know every one or two games you're kind of updated on you know some type of progress, or you're hearing that teams are interested in you, or is it just kind of like you're in the dark and you know it's out of the blue, like when the magic called you up? Yeah. What What is that process like as you're pretty much playing for the call up? Yeah. So I think you know, um, you know, it's different. I think you know. Um, you know, certain guys, I think that's, you know, for me personally, I just tell my agent, I say, look, until you get something, you don't got to talk to me. I'm just, you know, I'm just focused on hooping. You just do your job. I trust them a lot. So I'm like, you just do your job and let me know when KK, when something's coming. Um, but no, I think, you know, I mean, um, there's like certain periods. It's like, I think, you know, the G that we have was called like, oh, like right, up, like right around the time call-ups happen. So, you know, like usually, you know, this is different because of COVID, but usually after like January 5th or whatever, or January 10th, I think is when, the first round of call-ups come, and then there's another one around usually um, after the trade deadline. Um, so there's kind of periods when, you know, a lot of, a lot of movement happens. Um, before then, though, you just focus on just playing, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, trying to, you know, winning is a big deal with NBA teams. So helping your, your G League team win, okay, the, that makes a statement. Um, so you just kind of just focused on that. When the call-ups started, there was pretty much no doubt I felt like you were going to get one. You've already led the G League in blocks per game at some point this season. You have broken records with the hustle for rebounds per game. So I want to know, what is your secret to the style of play that you play? Um, yeah, so I think a lot of it is just, um, you know, um, just I think it's just having with rebounding and stuff like that and, you know, blocking the ball. And it's always had an eye for the ball. Um, so just maybe that a skill to just track the ball so I think one of that's just a gift but um you know I think you know when I first started playing you know I was a lot of, I was behind I started late so I was behind but a lot of the kids um that were that I was playing with are playing against um and then I think you know something that was just always kind of told to me was that you know if you get beat don't let it don't get beat because of effort you know don't let it be if you don't let someone out work if you get beat you know, just be that they just have more experience more skill than you and stuff like that so um for me I just got that I just so now I've got you know more skill higher IQ all that of course but that just always stuck with me to no matter what just outwork everybody on the floor um and then that coupled with you know learning the game more <laughs> um, and all the other things and, and being more if I'm more skilled has definitely helped 
But you said that obviously winning is a big thing for the G League teams. It's the same way for NBA teams. And that got me curious because there's been so many call ups. I'm, I'm paying attention to the call ups that are playing in the league. And I'm kind of wondering, like, how do y'all manage trying to make an impression on a team? Because obviously you've got 10 day contracts, so you might get a second 10 day. Uh, but how do you manage trying to make an impression on them with the time that you have versus trying to fit in with a group of guys that plays together pretty often and is, you know, and has that goal of winning? Because that is something I, I've been looking at with, with call ups and their level of aggressiveness and that type of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think one thing that you, that, you know, that I try and do that I would advise to anyone, no matter what level of basketball you play, um, is that to impact winning. That's, that always comes through um, to find a way to impact it, to possibly impact the game. Um, and that doesn't necessarily have to be through scoring. Cause again, like I said, you're coming into a point where, you know, you might, ne- you might ne- not necessarily be, um, you know, scoring out of points or getting the ball in your hands or coming into a, a kind of just to rotation, trying to figure it all out. Um, but just a winning habits that always comes through, you know, getting, okay, running a transition, okay, getting back on defense, talking on defense, um, boxing out, stuff like that. So doing those little things that always comes through. And then, um, that's, so that's, so doing all those things, no matter what is just because that doesn't, you, you, like, you, you don't have to know what the offensive scheme is or defensive scheme is to box out. That's just something. So doing those things. Um, and then from there, it's, um, you know, op- the link, what I love about basketball is that, you know, opportunity comes, you know, <laughs> like when one, one form or the other, it may not be as many as others, but opportunity always comes. So, you know, when you do get the, you know, if you're a guard, when you do space a four and get that, that, that corner three and you're wide open, you know, knock it down. And for me, when you get that, when to the hard screen and roll and get to the, and, 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 um, and get to the rim and hitting that layup or getting a foul and making that, those, those free throws, um, those are the things that come through. Um, so when you do be ready for those, you know, I think most people think, oh, I'm not getting any opportunity, you know, oh, it's only going to be this many minutes. Okay, but, you know, um, you know, those are important minutes. Every minute in the game is important. So, and if you're impact on those minutes with, with, with little things and making those are your opportunity, that, that, shine, that, that comes through. You mentioned making the most of your opportunity there. You are now on your second 10 day with Orlando. So how do you stay focused, not really knowing what the future holds for you? Because after two 10 days, most people might not know either the team has to sign you or they have to let you go. So how do you stay focused right now? Because you're in that last window and you know, there's some uncertainty there. Yeah. So for me and my advice to other people is, you know, um, just honestly in life at this point, because that's was my life now, but, um, no, the biggest thing is um, just take it day by day. Don't think it, don't look too far ahead. Um, you know, that's why, you know, that's, that's why I say, you know, pick a good agent or have bigger people in, the, in your corner because that's their job is to think about it. That's why you have, that's why you hire them. So that's because their job is to think about that kind of stuff. So get people that you, that, that, that you trust with that. Um, and for me, so I think, um, so I think, you know, just first, you know, you take a day, but, you know, you like, yeah, focus on having a good breakfast, having a good healthy breakfast, or first, like, like getting a good night's sleep, having a healthy breakfast, okay, getting good stretch in, those just, and having a good practice, you know, good shots after practice, good recovery, just think about everything before you, don't think, you know, don't even think to the next day or the next two days or the, 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 the last game, just, and then um, I find by doing that, one, you know, the process is a lot more enjoyable, um, and two, um, you know, I, I get better results. So my last question for you, uh, you've had a stint with the Raptors already. Now you're here with the Orlando Magic. You're still young. Has there been a moment for you yet in the NBA where you've had a moment of just kind of being a bit in disbelief that you're competing against some of the guys that you may have you know, been using on games when you were younger that you were just watching a couple of years ago? Has that moment happened for you? Uh, yeah, so I've had a, I had a lot of my first 10 day when I was with the Raptors. Um, recently, though, I had a really big one when um, we were playing the Miami Heat. And I checked in the second half and I was going against Udonis Haslam. <laughs> um, yeah. And I used to play really with Udonis Haslam. I think it was NBA, and now 2K is popular. Back when I was really young, it was NBA Live. That was the big mm-hmm. one. Uh, I played with Udonis Haslam on like NBA Live 06 when he was with like the, with the Hammond, Dwayne Wade, and um, that was one of my favorite. Okay, like one of my favorite teams to use. So I think I was like what eight years old <laughs> back when I was, <laughs> and that was he would have been, I think maybe like in his third year in the league. Or I can't remember, but um, yeah. So and then. Uh, so then just playing against Tim, I was like, oh, man, this is like, uh, I was like, I used to, man, you can really like, you used to be one of my, my favorite bigs to play as on the on NBA Live, and now we're matching against each other. Yeah, I think a lot of people have that reaction with Udonis, because nobody actually knows when when he's retiring, and so yeah, I, was, yeah. Yeah, I was a lot younger when he was around, and he's still yeah. here, who knows how long it'll be, that, that, that's funny. So it's funny, uh, my last question for you has to do with 
how great is it to see not only yourself, but two other of your teammates have gotten call-ups from the hustle, Ahmad Caver and Shaq Buchanan, all three of you. That's a lot of people from one team to get call-ups during this time. So just speak on your excitement for all the guys really all around getting these call-ups. Um, yeah, no, I was ecstatic um, for, for Shaq just because, I mean, he improved so much um, from last year to this year. Um, I mean, really he became a great two-way player. Um, and, you know, he's been at it for a minute. So, you know, he definitely, you know, he deserved his shot for sure. So that, that was when I was in. Just, it's just, honestly, his positivity, I think, is one thing that always came through with him is that no matter what situation he's in, no matter how he's playing, um, he's always positive and always has the best outlook and always, it always, always uplifts any, anywhere he, he's around. So I think just one, even one, when, when he got called up, I was like, I knew it instantaneously a lot. And I'm sure the Grizzlies know that because, you know, he, he knows them all well. They, the, the locker room would be better just because he's in there. Um, so just on that level, he can make, can make an impact um, outside of this basketball. Uh, Ahmad, another one. Ahmad, I mean, uh, I thought Ahmad played some of the best basketball, guard basketball in the bubble last year, personally. I think it was definitely good. So um, I think, and then he's only continued that into this year. Um, but, you know, so that's another one. I mean, I think a lot of, <laughs> I mean, I'm grateful because a lot of my, a lot of my buckets and points come for a result of him. So, um, like I said, so he helped me get to where I am just because he's just a good decision maker, good playmaker. Um, so happy for him. And, and I think, you know, they'll, they'll all do great.